Welcome to the short episode, Dr. James Beckett Sports Card Insights, uh, title Investment Fallacies, another in that series of uh, talking about sunk cost and the sunk cost fallacy of investment, which is basically we bl- we feel that we make rational decisions based on the future value of, let's say, cards. But in reality, frequently our decisions are are tainted, strongly tainted by emotional, financial and otherwise investments that you've made uh, in the past. And the more you've put into something, the harder it becomes to abandon it. And I'll give you an example with respect to to uh, to cards, uh, the sunk cost fallacy. But first, thanks sponsors, Topps Panini Upper Deck, Beckett Media, Beckett Grading, Beckett Authentication, ComC.com, Burbank Sports Cards, Mike's Stadium Sports Cards, Heritage Auctions, and Huggins and Scott Auctions. Uh, the sunk cost fallacy, I, I would say it applies more to individuals than businesses. I think businesses sometimes, it's like we've talked about the difference between a collector and an investor. If you see this as a business and, you know, you've been talked about uh, just earlier, I talked about being an enthusiast versus an addict. And basically, if you're buying and selling, then you're forced, you're going to be forced eventually in a, in a, in a market that's not straight up uh, to occasionally consider selling a card that you paid more for than uh, what you're uh, selling it for. So if you're in a situation where you have, uh, uh, you're going to sell a card and you've got uh, two cards you're considering selling, you've got offers for both of them. Uh, the offer for each one is $100. So you've got a $100 card uh, in your left hand, a $100 card in your right hand. The difference is the card in your left hand, you paid $50 for that card and somebody wants to buy it now for 100 And the card in your right hand, well, you paid $200 for that card and now the best offer you can get is $100. Most collectors, would sell the card that is doubled. That's my perception that people, it's, it's, I'm making money. I'm cashing in. I've doubled my money. I feel good about that. Now, if you were a stock market investor and you were talking about, you know, stocks and not, not individual cards, uh, savvy stock investors, you know, are considering capital gains. And, uh, in, in this kind of a situation, uh, frequently they're going to take the loss in order to shelter other gains, uh, the gains they can let ride. They don't have to pay taxes on gains that are not uh, they're not cashed in. So they do that. So uh, what you paid really should not be relevant to which card you sell. But I know it hurts to take a loss, but sometimes it's the better choice. In fact, I want to make a case that frequently it's the better choice. And I'll just point you to the tale of a couple quarterbacks. If you had two cards right now, and you were going to sell one or the other. And in your left hand, the card that has gone up is Lamar Jackson. You paid $50 for that. It's now worth $100. In your right hand is Baker Mayfield. You paid, you bought him at the top of the market. You paid $200 for that. And now it's $100. Well, I believe the proper question is, well, the, the strategy would be to sell, well, Pick the card that you, you think has the best chance of going up from where it is right now in the future. And future might mean uh, next month, next year, uh, next decade. Depends on what your uh, horizon is. But if you think uh, uh, Baker Mayfield is going to bounce back and that uh, and that Lamar Jackson and the flash in the pan are going to get injured, then uh, make decisions accordingly. Sell the one that, regardless of what you paid, whether it's a gain or a loss, sell the one with the uh, least appreciation potential in your perspective, uh, the one you think you've got the best chance of being able perhaps even to buy back later. Again, it, it, if, if you choose right and you sell the one that's going down instead of the one that's going up, and again, there's no sure thing there, then you can always buy it back for less uh, if you're so inclined uh, later. Well, um, again, as I said, I think collectors do uh, don't always get this. If you're an investor, you need to get this because you're going to be buying and selling uh, with a with a primary goal of making a profit. And at some point, you're going to come to the grips with the fact that how much you paid for it, even though obviously if you keep buying things for 200 and selling for 100, you're going to be out of business and that's not a good strategy. But again, if you've got a portfolio of cards, it's better to sell the cards that are that are um, that you predict are going to be going down in value, regardless of what you paid for them, and hold on to the ones that you feel are going up in value. Uh, the other problem with that is the demand, uh, generally the demand is greater for those cards that are uh, perceived by others to be going up. But if somebody wants to buy your $200 card, last year's $200 card for 100 now, and you think it's going to further decline, sell it. 
sell it. So uh, that's my investment fallacy. You can look it up, sunk cost fallacy. It's been written about. That's my application, my sports card insight for you uh, today, this week in the short episode. So uh, enjoy collecting. Again, we've got a new new world, new situation. Uh, I, you know, I'm more of a collector than an investor, but I certainly look at the investment aspect of, uh, of having a, a bunch of cards. So thanks. Uh, be back again uh, tomorrow or Monday, I guess it'll be with another episode.